today I'm flying Air Serbia for the very first time, going on an ATR 72600 on a short hop from Belgrade to Budapest. I started this journey not really knowing what to expect from Air Serbia, and after a recent very disappointing fight on an ATR 72600 with Air Lingus, I was a bit apprehensive about what this journey would be. But I found myself very pleasantly surprised. We arrived into Belgrade Airport around midday and were hoping to quickly get through security so we can get over to the lounge for some lunch. Thankfully both the immigration queue and security was really really fast, uh, quite short lines, plenty of staff around and everything moved nice and quick. It seemed like there was quite a bit of construction going on so it'd be interesting to see how this airport evolves over time. We'd really enjoyed our visit to Belgrade so I'd definitely be up for coming back again soon. In my research for this trip I'd read that Priority Pass allows access to the Air Serbia lounge and it seemed like a pretty decent lounge that I was looking forward to experiencing. Unfortunately it seems like something's changed there as we were only able to access the Business Club lounge, which was not so great. It was a very small overcrowded place, um, there didn't seem to be great food options initially, it had been a bit picked over but thankfully they did end up restocking a few bits and pieces so I was able to get a decent sandwich and then follow that up with a good plate of pasta. It was supposed to be carbonara, you know, it wasn't anything fancy, but it hit the spot and certainly filled me up before the flight, which was great. Thankfully, we didn't have too much time to queue in the lounge before it was time to go and board the plane. And it was quite a trek over to the gates. Um, Belgrade Airport definitely seems like the kind of place you can really get your steps. All of the smaller ATR 72600 planes seem to be on a remote stand, which means getting a bus over to them. And unfortunately, we were stood on the bus for a little bit of time in the boiling heat before we headed over out to the plane. The actual boarding was a little bit chaotic, everyone got straight off the bus and there was just a big crowd of people who slowly filtered onto the plane up these small steps that are attached to the door. The seat layout is in a 2-2 configuration and there's a decent amount of storage above the seats um, for such a small plane. We both had good sized hand luggage which fit in no problem. At the seats themselves there's not a huge amount of legroom but it's not too bad. The tray table was a little wonky but it was more sturdy than what we had recently on Aer Lingus and thankfully the seats didn't rock back like the Aer Lingus ones did as well so there was nothing banging into my knees thankfully. One feature of these aircrafts to be aware of though is that if you're out the window you do have this bar from the seat that blocks some of the leg room. The seats also have a hook for a jacket and there is recline available. I didn't use this on the flight though, there was someone sat behind me and given the limited space I think it'd be pretty harsh to be reclining on a flight like this. There were individual air vents which was greatly appreciated, it was a boiling hot day and the sun was on the left hand side of the plane where we were sat as well so it really was warm in there. In one of the pockets there was a menu for the onboard food and drink and they also had an in-flight magazine which I don't feel like I've seen for about a decade but I do actually quite like these and I did really appreciate that they still offer something like this and um, I wish other airlines would still do this too. Admittedly I never spend too much time reading them but there's usually one or two things in there worth reading and they always used to be a decent way of getting a bit of inspiration for a future trip. It didn't take long till everyone was on board and in their seats, the safety demonstration was done and we were soon on our way. It was quite a long taxi over from our remote stand to the main runway and um, we did seem to be going quite slow um, and we did have to stop to let a few of the planes pass um, but we did get some good views along the way of planes coming into land. Finally, we were on our way ourselves. It was a really clear sunny day and it made it really easy to see really far out um, on the flight over. And it was a really great opportunity to get one last view of some of the main sites in Belgrade. Shortly after we got in the air the onboard service started. 
A small snack and a bottle of water was provided as standard to everyone, but I also did want to take advantage of the onboard menu to purchase something extra. I wouldn't normally bother for a short flight like this, but they did say that they accepted cash only and I did have some leftover cash that I wasn't going to use up otherwise. There was one member of cabin crew who was taking all the orders and seemed to be doing his best to ignore me every time we walked past. Um, you know, I was really trying my best to get his attention, but he just walked straight past me every time, which is a bit frustrating. Eventually, I ended up pressing the call button for the first time in my life. Um, he did come over then, but everything I asked for on the menu was actually sold out apparently already. Um, I even said, okay, what actually is still on the menu? And there was basically nothing. Seemingly all the other people had got served first and there was nothing left for me, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, thankfully, as I said, they did provide a small snack and a bottle of water, um, so I had to make do with that. But I did think it was quite good that they were still providing something for free on such a small flight. Um, again, a much better experience than what we had on Aer Lingus. Um, unfortunately, the toilets at the back were not in the best state. Um, someone had just dumped a load of paper towels down there and had blocked it up. So not the best but i can't really fault the airline for that although all the crew were situated at the back of the plane for most of the flight so it would have been nice if maybe one of them had taken a look and cleaned that out so obviously i've given a few negatives there but it was overall a nice experience um, the crew were pleasant the seat was a lot more comfortable than I was expecting, and it was good to at least be provided with a snack and a bottle of water. I think one thing that made a difference as well is the flight was just not that crowded as well. There were a lot of empty seats. Um, the seat in front of us only had one person there. There was only one person in the seats behind. Uh, there was no one in the seats next to us. And I think just having that extra space and a bit of quietness uh, was also what made it more comfortable too. So it might be a different story on a completely round full flight. Um, maybe that would slow things down a bit as well, but the experience we had was a really good one. We then actually landed into Budapest slightly early as well, which was great. And the airport experience in Budapest was brilliant. We were through in absolutely no time and free to go explore the city. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.